morning guys welcome back to triple l rustic designs it has been five weeks since we put those slabs into our lumber kiln and today we're going to take you through the process of taking the slabs out of the kiln and checking their moisture content and then taking it over to the slab flattening table where we'll make it nice and flat and then we'll take it inside to the air conditioned environment so stick around and watch the process so if you didn't see the first video about five weeks ago we put around $30,000 worth of slabs into the kiln. This is our Nile L200 Pro dehumidification kiln. This is a 20 foot container kiln and it has the L200 Pro unit. This is the control unit here inside. As you can see, we're sitting at 126 degrees and the wet bulb has been sitting around 87 to 88 for the last probably week and a half or so. So the slabs inside should be done. We're gonna go ahead and stop the kiln. Now we'll go back to the doors and open it up and see what it's looking like inside. I did open the doors the other day and tested a couple of the slabs. Most of the slabs were testing between seven to 10%. A couple of them were a little bit higher, around 12 to 15%. Florida's EMC is 13.5%. So what that means is if you took a perfectly dry slab, let's say one of these slabs sitting at 7% moisture content, you left it out here outside in the Florida moisture, it will slowly work its way back up to around 13.5%. It's very humid here in Florida, and today it's probably like 30%. It's absolutely horrible today. But let's open up the doors and see what we're working with. So with the different species, everything dries differently. Down here, this is all spalted oak. So it's probably about 80% dead wood because of the spalting, but it dried really flat. This is monkey pod. It dries extremely fast and it dries very flat. It's a great species. Now this up here, I'm trying to remember what this was. I think it was either a piece of oak or monkey puzzle, but as you can see, it did not dry very flat. The good part is we cut our slabs at two and a half inches thick. So when we flatten this down, we're gonna be probably somewhere in the inch and three quarter to barely two inch range. So we'll be able to save it, but it sucks that the material sometimes warps like this or cups like this. Um, inside here, as you can see, when these slabs start drying, they pretty much tell you they're ready when all the bark just starts popping off on its own. Just like that, all this monkey pod bark is just peeling right off saying that it's dry. I can tell you, I tested this slab, this slab right here at about two weeks or three weeks of being in the kiln, came in here, tested it, and it was still at 60%. I'm interested to see though today because this monkey pod does dry really fast and I bet you this one's ready to go. Now through here, we've got a mixture of species. Uh, most of them were air dried before they went in here. So that means they were down 30% or below. We've got some eucalyptus, some monkey pod, some monkey puzzle, um, all kinds of stuff in here. So first things first, we're gonna get probably these top three slabs out. Um, we'll take those over to the slab flattening table and we'll check them out. Typically we would take the entire stack of slabs out of the kiln. Today we're not gonna do that. And the reason why is because it's summertime here in Florida. That means it rains every single day and it's extremely hot and humid outside. Like I said, it's like 30% moisture content outside right now, it's ridiculous. So what we're gonna do is we're only gonna take a couple slabs at a time out of the kiln we're gonna flatten them and then we'll take them into the controlled air conditioned environment and that way they'll be safe. I don't wanna take all these slabs out of the kiln where they're sitting at let's say 10% moisture content, put them out here and then them get rained on or them suck in all this terrible humidity and then they, they go right back up to around 20% moisture content. Don't want that to happen so we're gonna take out a couple at a time, take them inside and that'll be the safest way. Thank you. 
that's a piece of live oak. That thing, definitely lighter than it was when we put it in. This is a big piece of camphor. This was, I think this was like 42%, 42 to 50% when we put it in. I'm interested to see what this one's gonna be because it's definitely a lot lighter than it used to be. So this one's a piece of monkey puzzle. This one was fairly fresh when we put it in there and that's probably why it cupped pretty bad. Um, it's best to let the slabs air dry down below 30% and then put them into the kiln and you'll have a flatter drying experience. But this monkey puzzle dries really fast. It's another quick drying species. So that one's definitely gonna be probably around eight to 10%. Probably only weighs about 40 pounds, 50 pounds right now. When it went in, it was closer to 100 pounds. So like I said, these are the monkey pod slabs. These were the freshest slabs that we put into the kiln. These were 100% wet. They, they'd only been cut and air drying for about a week when we put them in here. Uh, but because the monkey pod dries so flat and so fast, I took the risk and threw them in here with the rest of the slabs. And I'm excited to see what they're testing at. These are also gonna be some of the most beautiful slabs in this kiln. So I can't wait to flatten it and show you. All right, we pulled four slabs out of the kiln. We're gonna go ahead and shut these doors so that it doesn't suck up a bunch of moisture in there. We'll let them stay in this nice hot environment and we'll head over to the slab miser where we'll test those slabs and then we'll get them flattened. So as you can see, I have three of those four slabs laid out here. We've got the camphor, we've got the monkey puzzle, and we've got a piece of live oak. These are pretty different species. The monkey puzzle is more like the pine species, which is why it dries so fast. Camphor is in the middle of the road between like oak and pine. So I think it's still considered a soft wood, but it has hardwood properties. It does dry pretty, pretty fast and pretty flat. And then the live oak is miserable. We won't be cutting any more live oak. Uh, it takes forever to dry. It takes forever to flatten. Terrible species, but we'll see what that one's testing at as well. For testing moisture in the slabs here at our shop, we use two different moisture meters. Each one has its purpose. And today we're not gonna tell you which one's better than the other. We use the two different meters in different circumstances. And I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. First, we have the Wagner Orion 950. This is a pinless moisture meter that you basically set on the slab, it shoots a radar down into the slab, and it tells you the moisture content. This is a great moisture meter that is not intrusive to the slabs. I can tell you here at our shop, we usually use this for finished slabs, like finished lumber or finished flattened slabs because it doesn't punch a hole into the slab. It just reads down into it. Uh, from our experience, this has been pretty accurate. Um, I would say it's within a couple points of the accurate moisture reading of the slab, but it's really good moisture meter for a non-intrusive measuring method on wood. The other moisture meter is the Delmhorst Instrument JX30. Now, this moisture meter is a pin moisture meter. We have here the hammer pin. Basically, you set this on the slab and you hammer the pins down into the slab. But with that, it creates holes in the slab. So let's say you've just S4S'd a board 
and then you wanted to test the, mo the moisture content, you go driving these holes into the board, you're gonna see it. Even with these slabs, when we test them in the rough condition, there's pretty much always gonna be the holes in the slabs because of driving those pins in about an inch and a half. The other option on this meter is it has these little tiny pins. So if you were doing some really, really thin material, you could use these little baby pins. They're about a quarter inch long. But most of the time, when we're testing rough cut slabs, during the drying process, we're using the Delmhorst JX30 with those inch and a half long uh, prongs there. It does leave the holes in the slabs, but in the end, you can fill those holes with like some super clear uh, epoxy or some Starbond CA glue, or even some sawdust and some wood glue, mix it up, and you can kind of fill the holes to where you can't see them. Today, we're gonna use both of these moisture meters. We're gonna test all four of these slabs. I'm gonna show you the readings coming off of both of the meters. Since I have the JX30 in my hand, we'll start with that. So when I reached out to Delmhorst, they didn't have a camphor species option in this meter. Oh look, so my body is 46% 46, 46, uh, moisture content, quite uh, humid. But they said that you can use the white oak setting, that it would be equivalent. So we're gonna be using the white oak setting. We're gonna take the pins. We're gonna come about, I don't know, maybe 10 to 12 inches in from the end of the, the slab. And we're gonna drive those pins into the slab. All right, so you may be able to hear that beeping. This camphor slab is at 24% right now. So it's almost dry, but it's not fully dry. We'll test it in one more spot over here. So in that area, it's 14%. So it seems like maybe there's a small pocket of moisture right here that's 24%, but we're testing at 14% on that side. Uh, so one thing that we've run into when using this JX30 and driving those pins into the wood is sometimes you snap off the pins. They do send you with a whole pack of pins. They send you with like 10, 10 to 15 extra pins. Uh, we've broken quite a couple already. What I've seen people doing to prevent this from happening is they'll take a, a drill with a really tiny drill bit, I think it's like an eighth or even smaller drill bit, and they drill the holes first, and then they drive the pins in. So that way it's less friction on the pins and it, it helps them last longer. So we'll go ahead and replace this pin and then we'll keep testing. The nice part is, it is pretty easy to replace these pins, and uh, it's nice of Delmhorst to send a whole package of replacement pins with the meter. All right, so we know that right here, we were at 14%, and then right here, we were at 24%. So that was with the uh, Delmhorst. So we'll go ahead and write a D. Before we move on to the monkey puzzle slab, we'll go ahead and use the Wagner. So again, because camphor is kind of a rare special species, Wagner did, did not have the camphor as a species in, programmed inside as well. But I reached out to Wagner and they said we can use species setting 0.52. So we set our species setting to 0.52. We set our depth to three quarter inch depth. And we're gonna ride this around the slab, testing the moisture. So it looks like where, the, I drove, where I drove those pins in, it's testing from 18 to 22%. And then over here, we're looking at 10%, 10, 13, 12. So it looks like it, it ranges from 10 to 12-ish, all in this area over here. So that 14 is pretty accurate. And it looks like I can find that pocket 
in that pocket right there. 20, oh yeah, 23.1 in that pocket. So looks like both meters are pretty spot on. With the JX30 from Delmhorst, we had 24. With over here, we had 14. With the Wagner in the same spot, we've got 13. And in this same spot, we've got 23. So as you can see, both meters are great. They're both pretty pricey, but it's a very good investment if you have a sawmill or if you're working with slabs or wood of any kind. So now we'll move on to the monkey puzzle. We'll start with 13, 23. Okay, so over here on the monkey puzzle, we'll start with the Delmhorst JX30. We're gonna set our species, let's see. Let's go in here and look at the options. They don't have an option for monkey puzzle, but they do have a southern yellow pine option. And that this wood is very close to southern yellow pine, so we're gonna go ahead and select that option. First, we're going to mark where we need to drill our holes. And then we'll go ahead and drill some holes. That'll make it easier to drive these pins in and hopefully not break them. All right, so the inside of this monkey puzzle is testing at nine to 10%. Yeah, 10% basically, the inside of this monkey puzzle. Now, like I said, I hate putting holes into these slabs because they will be there even after we flatten it. So I'm gonna believe it that this slab is 10%. I can tell from our experience over the last two and a half years that with the weight of this monkey puzzle, it is dry. Now we're gonna switch over to the Wagner Orion 950. We're gonna select our species. So just to have the same pretty close accurate results, we're gonna set it to Southern Yellow Pine. And on here, that setting is 0.59 slash pine. So we're gonna set our setting 0.59. And we're gonna leave it on three quarter inch depth and we'll all test. So in that exact same spot where I drove the pins with the Delmhorst, we're testing at five to 6%. Now with this pinless meter, it likes to have a flat surface. And as you can see, this slab is pretty jacked up. So we'll keep searching around and just trying to get a good average reading. Even there, 6%. Down here, 6 to 4.7. So this slab is actually over dried for being here in Florida because when I flatten this and it's sitting at 6%, now it's gonna be sucking in all this Florida humidity and it's gonna work its way back up to 13%, causing the wood to move a little bit. So I may only flatten it about 75%, let it acclimate to the Florida moisture, and then once it's acclimated and it's testing around 13%, then we'll come back in and flatten it all the way. So with the Delmhorst, we were at 10%. With the Wagner, we were at 6%. Now we're gonna work our way down to the live oak. Like I said, live oak is the worst species to work with. Um, this slab had actually already been flattened. So it was flattened before, and then we realized it was still like 30%. So we put it back into the kiln. I don't know what it's gonna test at. I haven't had a chance to test it at all. So it's gonna be a surprise to me. We're gonna go into our Delmhorst. We're gonna select our species. Should have an oak species. Actually, this is gonna be the same as white oak. So we'll select white oak. We'll drive our, or we're gonna drill our holes first. Gosh, that's a hard species. 
We'll drive our pins in. All right, so 16% with the Delmhorst. So it's better than it was, but it's still not dry. And that is why we don't mess with live oak. So now we're gonna use our Wagner. We're gonna to go to our little book here. And oak, white oak is 0.68. So we'll set our species to 0.68. Still that three quarter inch depth. And in that, that same spot that I drove the pins with Delmhorst, we're looking at 18 to 19%. Searching around this piece, it fluctuates from 15 all the way up to 20%. But in that same spot, we're still looking at 18. So it plays into what I was saying, how the Delmhorst is usually about four degrees, 4% 4 away from the accurate reading. Whether this is the accurate or this is the accurate, they're usually within like two to 4% off from each other. So with the Wagner, we had 18. And with the Delmhorst, we had 16. So that's pretty good. So as you can see, both moisture meters work great. They're both around the same price point. I think it's around the $600 range. If you want the pin version, I would go with the Delmhorst. It has these pins that you drive into the wood. If you want the non-intrusive pinless version, go with the Wagner. This is the Orion 950. Like I said, when we have really nice finished slabs here, we're usually using the Wagner because it doesn't put any holes into the wood. It's non-intrusive. But when these slabs are in these rough conditions like this, we're usually using the Delmhorst JX30. If you guys are interested in finding out more about either one of these moisture meters, I will have a link in the description below this video. Before I put the meters away, we gotta test that fourth slab. That's that monkey pod slab. Both meters, both companies have a monkey pod setting. On the Wagner, the setting is 0.50. So we'll go ahead and set that to that. So 0.50 at three quarter inch depth. And then on the Delmhorst, we'll select the monkey pod. First, we're gonna start with the Wagner. We're working our way back and forth across the slab. Looks like it goes from 10 to 20% in the middle. So the sap wood on the outsides is like nine to 10%. And then in the direct center, it goes from, oh, right there is 32%. So there's a, there's a big moisture pocket right there. But most of the middle ranges from 12 all the way up to 20% there, and then 32 there in the middle. Let's check down here. Same thing, at the end of the slab down here, there's a pocket with 32% moisture. So these monkey pod slabs are probably not gonna be fully dry. Uh, they could just have maybe another two weeks in the kiln to get the rest of that moisture out. But let's, let's test it with the dome horse. Delm horse, we're gonna change our setting to monkey pod. So down here where there was that 32% pocket, I'm just gonna pre-drill, let me mark it real quick. All right, so with the, with the Wagner Orion 950, the max moisture content is 32%. There's, the wood's gonna be higher than that, but the max it'll read is 32%. But with the Delmhorst, it actually gives you accurate readings all the way up to, I think, 60%. So right now, with the pins driven inside this monkey pod, we're testing at 41% in that spot. So. That is a plus with the Delmhorst, is it gives you a really accurate reading when your wood is above 32%. Now that I know it's 40%, that came down 20% in the last two weeks. Cause like I said, I tested it at week two or week three and it was 60%. So we're down to 42%, 40%. 
We just need to put it in the kiln for another couple weeks and it should pump the rest of the moisture out. Now that we know the moisture content of the four slabs, I am gonna go ahead and flatten all four slabs. Even though that monkey pot is not ready, that is the top slab. So out of the stack of slabs, it's the least valuable. So I'm just gonna go ahead, flatten it, and then we'll put it back in the kiln as a flattened slab. And then it should just move a little bit more, but it should still dry pretty flat. With the camphor, it is a little high on the moisture content, but we'll go ahead and flatten that one. Monkey puzzles already ready to go, fully dry, we can flatten that. And then the live oak was just a little bit high, but we'll go ahead and flatten that one again. And I'll show you how the slab miser works. So the first one we'll start with is the biggest one, and that's this monkey puzzle. The monkey puzzle is a soft wood, so I'm able to take almost a full eighth inch pass each time with the slab miser. We'll get it set up here, clamp down, and I'll show you how, to, how we flatten it. All right, as you can see, we've got one side of this monkey puzzle nice and flat. The only spot that didn't get hit was these little pieces here. I could have taken one more pass to probably clean that up, but we're gonna go ahead and flip it over and flatten the other side. All right, so we have that monkey puzzle nice and flat. As you can see, it turned out beautiful. This is the only spot that the flattener did not hit, but that'll do for now. We came down a lot of thickness to beat that cupping, but we're still at about an inch and a half. So it's still a nice usable slab. It would make a great river table. Basically, you'd cut it down the middle, flip the live edges inside out, and then pour an epoxy river table down the middle. So we'll take that one inside and then we're gonna get that monkey pod up here and get that flattened and show you the awesome colors inside that monkey pod. So inside the shop here, as you can see, we've got all these slabs that are kiln dried and then they've been flattened. So once it's flattened, like we just did to that monkey puzzle, we bring it in here, we mark it up, we add the price and all the dimensions to it and we put it in here for customers to come get. So this monkey puzzle slab will probably be priced around 450 maybe $500. Uh, nice, beautiful, just, just shorter of five feet, but that'll make a really nice project for somebody. So that only took a couple minutes, but as you can see, we got that top side of that monkey pod, nice and flat, beautiful species. 
this is what I was talking about with that pin moisture meter. This is what happens. So now you've got this beautiful finished slab, but you've got these holes from testing the moisture. So some people hate that, some people like that. Basically, you could either take some of the sawdust from this brown and fill those holes to where you almost couldn't see it. You could use some Starbond CA glue. I mean, you're gonna have to fill all these holes anyway, so it kind of blends in, but that's the only downfall to using that Delmhorst is that it leaves these holes like this. We'll get this flipped over and flatten the other side. The other side's gonna be way prettier. There you go, beautiful monkey pod. Now that is a nice species. So, like I said, we still have some moisture in this area here and some moisture in this area here. I actually can feel the wood is still wet there. And what it is, is when this grain changes like this into these cool patterns, it holds that moisture more than the straight grain does. So we'll let this sit air dry a little bit when we start the kiln back up we'll put it back in the kiln and fully dry this little wet area everything else was like 12 percent but we just have the moisture pocket right here beautiful slab for now dad's going to take it inside just to show people what the monkey pod looks like because we do have a lot of slabs in the kiln of the same species that are going to be fully dry So you can see the difference between that monkey pod and that monkey puzzle. Monkey puzzle is more of a white, looks like pine or like sweet gum. And then the monkey pod has that super dark heartwood, looks like walnut. So beautiful species, both start with monkey, but look completely different. All right guys, so this video is running a little bit longer than I wanted it to, but you get the concept, basically, we're gonna come to the kiln, take out the slabs that are dry, take them over to the slab flattener. Once they get nice and flattened, we'll take them into the store where it's a controlled air conditioned environment and they'll stay safe and moisture controlled until a customer comes and picks it up. I hope you guys enjoyed watching the process of what we do here behind the scenes, unloading the kiln. If you guys are in the sawmill business and you need a lumber kiln, I highly recommend you check out Nile. I will have a link in the description below to all their kilns and everything that they have to offer. If you guys like this video, please smash that like button. Consider hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss all of our future videos. And drop a comment down below on which one of those species you liked better, the monkey pod or the monkey puzzle. Guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.